Today we talk to Skylar Johnson, former Call of Duty professional player and founder of many successful esports brands all across the industry such as Team Envy, Drink Control, and the award-winning creative agency Paper Crowns. We'll go over his story as one of the only figures in esports with experience as a professional player, business entrepreneur, and creative. So today we are here with Skylar Johnson. He has a massive resume, but just to quickly go through the list, he is known for being the founder of Team Envy, Paper Crowns, Drink Control, former professional Call of Duty player. He's been around everywhere in the esports industry, and thankfully we have him on here today. So that's my intro for you, Skylar. How are you doing? I'm great, man. I've been uh, wanting to do this for a long time. I think because uh. Most of the time when I do these, like I'm not doing it with people that I've known for a long time, unless it's like Adam or something. Mm -hmm. With you, I just feel like we're just getting on, just chatting, you know? Yeah, exactly. Like a lot of familiar faces in the chat too, you know what I mean? Well, not faces, but names, I guess, throughout our community that's always commenting or always supporting things. Community is tight knit, bro. It's good to see. Oh yeah, absolutely. I'm glad everyone's here today. This I'm super excited for. I feel the same way. It feels like, well, at least I'm going to try to make it feel like just one of our average Discord conversations. But regardless, I'm excited to ask you these questions. If you want to just hop right into it yeah. and we can just run through the list. So this is the question I ask everyone who's been interviewed so far just to run through really quickly. And that's when did you start? Where did you start? And why did you start? Uh, so the win, man, um, started forever ago, like ages, um, would have been 13 years ago now inside of the Call of Duty scene. Crazy. COD 4 was playing college football, uh, American football, and kind of I was on year two of that and suffered an ankle injury, kind of fell into like depression, um, kind of got hurt. I could have rebounded, went to physical therapy, done the proper thing. Um, instead, I kind of just felt sorry for myself, became lazy, lived like a sedentary lifestyle, and then actually started picking up gaming, right? So like, it turned into something good from that. And then Envy was born in 2008. And then four months later after playing Call of Duty, um, I became like a pro player. I didn't really know what that was prior to that. It wasn't really like a thing that I knew about, but the competitive gaming scene was something I was like super interested in. And then Envy and played as a pro with Envy for what, until about 2012, 2013. Um, and then shifted and went up to an energy drink in New York, an unnamed energy drink in New York. <laughs> um, and started building out that brand for them for about four or five years and then stepped away from that actually and kind of started just doing things on my own. You know, I, I felt at that point in time was taking that leap of faith in my myself and my own career was probably the, the most pivotal thing I could have done uh, because when you're not relying on other people to pay you, it becomes a, a way different story, right? So uh, that was a good little answer, right? I'm doing all right. Oh, yeah. That's kind of exactly what I was looking for. I mean, the main point to get across is, and this is why I was super excited to talk to you, is you're pretty much one of the only people I know who's just been everywhere in this industry when it comes to actual experience playing as like a professional player, owning businesses, and even being on the creative side. That's super uncommon. And I think we can just lead right into the next question. So working in all of those different fields, being a pro player, business owner, creative, do you see any major connections or ties between those things and kind of what led you to pursuing them throughout 100%. your life? You know, uh, it, it's so different because back in the day, like my, my mother's like an artist, dude, like she has some of the weirdest <clears throat> things around my house. Like we're, instead of Christmas trees, one year we had like mannequins with Christmas lights on them. I know it's super weird, but it's just mm -hmm. how she is. <laughs> she, she grew up <laughs> That, uh, so there, there was just like a bunch of weird stuff all throughout the house, statues. She was always making things. And that's kind of where, where I learned to fall in love with traditional art. Right. So I would take like um, any type of art classes I could kind of extended to do like uh, world arts and leading about like Renaissance art. And then that led into forgetting about art, trying to take football more serious. Right. And then the passion actually came back and caught four. And I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but I was like the only one pumping out montages. So I would do like creative montages and, and like try to I'd want a montage of like just a character falling down a well. <laughs> it had nothing to do with the game. If you go back and look at it, people are always like, dude, this guy's like weird. What is he doing? Because, you know, some of it wasn't even about playing COD. And I think at the, it was just expressionism. Everyone has something to say. Everyone wants to get something out. And for me, the only way to do that was through Call of Duty at the time. Um, so I would try to do that. And I made like this Till Infinity series. But yeah, that, that, that was kind of the whole creative mixing back in. And then the pro style or the, the pro side of it was all about competition. So I think when you blend all those together, right, like for our business, you know, we're not, you know, we're not losing like that. That's the, the goal, the mentality on everything. Mm -hmm. I think um, 
the competitive mindset from traditional sports to esports to then go into business owner, like oh, being any type of entrepreneurship, whether it's business or not, whether you're even doing charity, you want to be the best and do the best that you can in that charity. Right. So it's, it's all about competition for me. And yeah, there's some competition with others, but not really. You know how I speak on it. I don't really view people as competition. I, I think right. that we there's so much to do that, like the people that are worried about competition now are kind of the people that are thinking too small. And this space is so big. We got to worry about that later. Like we all have so much to do. Like mm -hmm. nobody's really done shit yet, in my opinion. Like no offense to anybody, including us. Like I don't <laughs> I don't think this is just the star, bro. And it has to be like that because. If, if we all start like living this mindset of, oh, we've done so much while the space is still in its infancy, what, what, what is it going to be like when the space is where it really needs to be, you know, and then we thought we were doing something back then and you kind of just get left behind, you know? It's kind of interesting because it's like a competitive nature, but at the same time, you just kind of want to build with the community you're a part of, right? Um, and I think you being a part of the community and building all these things, just moving into the next question I have lined up for you. So obviously with that kind of mindset you've developed throughout your life, you have a whole bunch of kind of things in your pocket that you're working with. So a lot of people don't know this, but Skylar also, along with all the things I listed out in the start of the stream, he also has a full-time job. Uh, I don't know if we need to go into the specifics of it, but he works a full-time job outside of esports and is somehow able to manage and just build all these businesses simultaneously. So I wanted to ask, how is it that you're able to manage multiple jobs at once, but also continue to see success in every one of them? Uh, energy allocation, right? Like you always hear like the the Elon Musks and, uh, you know, I've, I've heard so many people talk about energy allocation, like where are you putting your time? And I live off that. I think it's super important. So for me, I have a schedule and the, the full-time job thing, just to elaborate that, that was when we left Unnamed Energy Drink. Um, I brought a bunch of the creatives that we were with. I don't know if I'm allowed to drop some names because they're all fire. Uh, Rish was one of them. Yeah, uh, Ali, Adam. You know, just the whole flow, Renato, the whole squad. Um, I needed to learn how to market outside of esports. Um, or like we would always do launch activations and team activations. And I, and I knew how to do that. I knew how to resonate to our community because this is our spot. But I needed to prove to myself that I could learn how to market to a different uh like a, a way different demographic mm -hmm. um so we actually went to go work for a sunroom company uh, like an outdoor living company um it was an opportunity to kind of expand a, a skill set and then that now shifted to more of a digital job so it's still full-time but it's just do what you got to do like the hours aren't really full-time it's like if you if you work hard on the weekend that's all that's all you got to do just get it done for the next week like for me it's for example i do um mondays what is it traditionally monday thursday friday is like more of a crowns focused. Mm -hmm. um, I try to do Tuesdays towards control. It, I have like a whole schedule actually right in front of me. Uh, and I, I have to stick to those, right? So like, I, I basically right at two o'clock on a certain day, I have to break it off. No matter if I'm in the middle of a call, no matter if I'm in the middle of stuff, because that time allocation is everything, right? So like, sometimes I'll come in Discord just to chat with you guys, because mm -hmm. that's like my mental break. It's like, you're not pitching the same stories. You're not hearing the same people say what they need all the time, but they don't really know what they need, right? So like, it, it, it's better to communicate with people around me to where I can like level set, right? Because some people have like fairy tale dreams and like, uh, what is it, like champagne dreams, beer pockets, right? That's what they say. Mm. So it's like a lot of people that what we speak to, you've been in those calls, right? Yeah. And coming in to chat with the guys is, is kind of like my level set period, but then it's go back into it. So it's all time allocation. That's that's one thing everyone should take away is energy allocation always. Make right. your list and do just cut, be hard with your time. Like, cause that's the one thing you have, like all the money, every, all that other stuff that that's going to come no matter what that energy allocation is everything. Yeah. I mean, so speaking into that, and I'm actually really curious about this myself. So obviously you put a lot of time uh, and you manage it very well into the things you do, but I was also curious just on the off chance that you do get any spare time where you're not working on something. I was just wondering, how do you spend that time? How do you kind of take a break and relax from everything? The, the problem with that is, as I told you, like I try to go to the gym a lot um, just to kind of mental reset, you mm -hmm. know, like you can kind of leave your phone, put it on like airplane mode or whatever and just listen to music. It, it would probably be the gym or uh, a lot of it also is just hanging out, man. Like I, I love mm -hmm. to just listen to music and vibe. Like I don't really mess with a lot of TV uh, sometimes, but I just felt like when I was watching movies, I, I can't commit to a movie. I think it's like, bro, you're taking two hours of my time right now. Yeah. <laughs> Unless I really like that movie, that is a lot of time to give something. And it's not like an arrogant way, it's just you can do a lot in two hours, right? And I, I got two two dogs, I got I got a girl I gotta hang out with, you know, those are all, yeah. all the other responsibilities that, you know, you gotta make sure that you take care of the people around you. And there's also the, the, the awful things about business, right? Like the, 
how are the taxes and the, the things that I don't really know anything about, but I need to line up the people that are doing them for us um, to make sure that those are on point. But mainly it's all ideation of other things. So like if I'm, even if I'm sitting in there, like chilling in our, we have like this little den room or whatever, and I'll just be in there, there might be like a show on. It, it's always just thinking and or trying to think about the next thing and, and just just let it happen. Because, you know, when you're when you're heavily invested in, in all of these companies, as I'm sure, you know, you just can't stop. I don't know how to turn it off. And that's not like a blessing. Right. That's not something that you sit here and brag about. That's something that you go, you, you might have a clinical problem. Yeah, I uh, got to fix yeah. that. But yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it almost sounds like even when you're not working, you're still working in a sense then so it's just the gears are constantly moving right do you view it as working like honestly like when you sit there and this is a question back to you like do you view like what you do is always work or do you feel that like you're always trying to kind of pursue the next level right like did you think mm -hmm. whether you're because i've seen you i know you're not hanging out i know you're creating <laughs> right but you're creating for yourself yeah so. yeah that's true i mean in my eyes too when i think of the word work and i'm still kind of like i don't really even know the full answer to that question but when I look at work, it's not really a negative term, you know, it's not like you're running yourself into the ground because when I think of work, it's more of just productivity and taking the next step and kind of climbing that ladder. So in my eyes, it's like, yeah, it's still work, but it's, you know, it, most people they're in this industry because they don't want it to feel like, like it is a negative, right? That's so like when you, I guess, take it back, you know, I, I told you this is going to be a, a, a two-sided interview. You, yeah. Chad, he's, you know you as well, right? Let's like, go. Um, do you think that um, when, when you're when you're in that process of doing work that you know you have to do, right, whether it's 400T, just things that need to get done, like your day-to-day your -day or even crowns, mm -hmm. is it one of those things where, like, do you ever uh, take a step away from that to focus on you? Like, remember, we, we always chat about burnout together, right? We have those yeah. side combos about, like, hey, what does burnout mean? What does that really look like? Let's identify that over the course of the year. I still don't know if it's a thing uh, mm -hmm. for me personally. We've had that <laughs> chat. But, like, do, do you ever step away and kind of look at this and go, hey, now I'm, I'm feeling a certain way and I need to get my own creativity out to where you put that on the side for a second to do something for yourself, whether now, I guess, being an NFT or just mm -hmm. whatever it could be? Yeah. I mean, most people that watch my content and, like, my streams and stuff, I'm, like, a huge advocate for taking breaks, chilling out, like, taking a step back. Uh, I always tell people to get rest. You know, the all nighters, sometimes you have to do them, but in any moment you can. I, as far as the creative process goes, sometimes it's necessary for people to, to let their brain like literally recharge. Right. So I take those breaks constantly, but that's kind of what I was thinking. And what I was saying earlier with this idea of work is even when I take a break, I'm still working at something, you know, like I'm working to recharge, right? So I, I always try to have some purpose, like when I take a break that I'm aware of, uh, that I'm doing it to kind of reset myself so I can come back into it and just be ready to go in, you know, uh, and get stuff done. So that's kind of how I view it, which is why work to me is like, it's always a positive and kind of like with you, like it's, it's always, you're always moving, you're always working in some way. You know, you always have some goal in mind. Dude, that's what's crazy. Like, what is 20, like, lately, I, I remember, what was it, maybe, I don't know how long ago, but I used to actually hang out. You remember the days you used to hang out and really not think about anything? Yeah. Like, when, when did that stop? You know, that's one of the things that's like, I don't know, everyone can relate to because it's, you see everyone doing so much around you. It's so mm -hmm. motivating for me, dude. Like, the people I follow or just, I, I just see so much. And then, you know, you, you, you want to fight off the, I don't know if you ever get, it's not jealousy, right? Because you want to see people succeed. That'd be yeah. like arrogant of me. It's um, it, it's it's like you want to be involved. You know, it's like you see someone do something, you're like, hey, I want to do that. You know what I mean? But you don't want to rip it. You want to be like, hold on, <laughs> like how can I approach this in my own lane? And I think if if for me, like addressing that is half the time I never get to do it, right? Because it doesn't even make sense. Like I'll see mm -hmm. someone drop like a dope merch thing. I'm like, I don't even do merch right now, but that just looks fire. You know, like I want to do some merch right now. Yeah, it, it, it's all crazy. I, I just I think about that often. Like when did that? When did that timetable shift of like being able to just chill without the thought of like, oh, what's next? Yeah. Right. I mean, for me, that stopped in high school. Um, basically, as soon as I was able to get paid to do what I wanted to do, because I, I know exactly what you mean. Like when I was in high school, I would just chill, do nothing. And there would be no reason for me doing nothing. I'd just be doing nothing because I had nothing to do. Right. And right. now it's all right. about like I'm taking a break because I need to like recharge reset myself like there's some purpose in Always. everything you know so it's kind of interesting i honestly didn't really even think about it that heavy until uh we got kind of talking about it so i appreciate that but yeah <laughs> it's a really interesting concept and i'm still kind of fuzzy on 
<laughs> what I <laughs> what I think when did about your life go away? that's what you're fuzzy on. <laughs> yeah, like when when did everything switch like that? I think it was really college. Um, just threw me into that work mode. Like things started moving like ten miles an hour to a million miles an hour. For me, it was just a jump. I know you've been kind of hustling probably for longer than I've been because uh, I didn't really realize my goals and to much later into my life. I was wasted hustle, bro. Like I was playing, I was thinking like I was going to be this professional making hundreds of thousands of dollars, but we were making like 12 grand to win a tournament. Mm. You know what I mean? So like we would put in 16, 17 hour days for what? Like looking back on it, it's kind of like, damn, but I, I got to build Envy, right? So like Envy, you know, that, that, those are the roots. You, you, I think the roots teach you a lot during that process, right? So you don't get the glorified version. I think those are the struggle years. But looking back on some of the things, I wish it would have just been a manager or something, man. Yeah. A lot of that time, you, you you go, damn, I really played that much video games. Just yeah. to like, what is the end goal? But And then I see the way NBA is now, and it's cool to see I have like a fan base, I guess. so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I ended up working out. And I think talking, too, about struggle in esports, since those two words are so often paired together we can kind of move into what i have next for you and i was curious in asking what your favorite part is about esports and your least favorite or something that you'd like to see some improvement in favorite part is community i think this is people don't get it i speak to so many like venture capitalist firms and just old heads and corporate companies and they don't get it they don't understand like our community is how it is like mm -hmm. the, the fact that we can take something and meme it the fact that we can ratio something the mm -hmm. fact that we can do all these things that are like that doesn't really exist a lot of places, right? Like, and, and people wouldn't know unless you're involved and you can see, you know, but then, mm -hmm. and, and the, dude, the artists, right? And so I'm not really in esports as much, but like in our community, we have, and I think everyone says it, our mm -hmm. community is filled with the dopest artists, no matter what. I see, I follow some some pretty dope artists and I know you're never supposed to compare the two, but I, I, I see some skill levels that I'm super impressed by from self-taught individuals, right? Mm -hmm. Versus people that have 20, 30 years of experience, you know, and we're surrounded by some. Some people on our team are, and sorry, they're just crazy. Yeah. Like our, yeah. we have we have a roster of just talented people. And then out there in the community outside of just crowns is like there's so many people that are putting in work or put in work. And like, you know, we, we take someone that, that starts, a, you know, speaking on like age 10, yeah. teaches themselves over the course of like 11 years or whatever it is. Like th those type of things are crazy Like to, to me. And I, I don't think people can replace that. The, the things that need to change are the fairy tale valuations. When I heard Call of Duty League and I'm sure Activision hates every time we say this, but like. I hated when I saw 25 million it made no sense. People just threw numbers at the wall for people to be like, okay, cool. Like there was no valuation in that, right? That that's not proper affair. And what that does is it causes people to struggle to pay the artists. It causes mm -hmm. people to struggle to pay some of the, the, the team, like the, the players that are making that league. But more importantly, it struggles or teams struggle to even have a creative in-house ability to create dope content mm -hmm. to where that $25 million investment is on display, but no one's talking about it. So you just sit here and you go, Wait, so they put out those graphics, but they paid that much for that kid and the team is worth this much money. And it just, there's a lot. We could sit here. That'll be a whole three hour podcast. We're doing that, man. Because oh, yeah. this community, it, it's done a lot for me, but it's also, it's done a lot worse for others, right? Like you, you've seen some people that have struggled. I've, I've mm -hmm. Back in the day, we used to have, I used to fight just to get designers to get paid at one of the companies I was at. Right. And I'm talking some of those payments were beyond minimal. Right. But you still wanted to have a squad. You still wanted to support the squad. You know, so like that, yeah. that part is kind of awful. Um, there, there's a lot <laughs> yeah. for the long, long form. No, that. no, that's pretty much exactly how I feel about it. And I'm sure you know that as well Is like everyone is in agreement. The creative scene, artists, designers, everyone in that kind of area in esports are the best in any industry, not just gaming, just in general, you know, and it's almost like there's this gold mine that people don't want to pay for, you know, yep. um, it's pretty unbelievable. So I'm kind of in the same boat as far as improvement. I think we are heading in the right direction. Like people have only been getting paid salaries as designers like recently, but it's happening right. more and more. Some people are getting paid like what they should be in this industry, especially as a designer. That's like super important and way unheard of. That would not have happened even four or five years ago, you know, that actually leads to one of my questions for you. Oh, shoot. <laughs> so well, good, well, let's good. let's go into it then. Yeah. What do you so, have lined uh, up? <laughs> here we go. Outside of just um, having the ability to teach people, because we always chat about like how important that is to you, just teaching people and, and kind of using your knowledge base that you, you acquire to people that just want to learn or are eager to learn. Mm -hmm. Outside of just teaching people, what are the key goals for you over the course of 2021 into 2022 about 
changing the, the, the culture of the community, the, this design culture? Like, um, where do you see this being at the end of 2022? And if not, where it will be versus where you want it to be? Oh, yeah. I mean, I love that question. I think you know that I love that question, too. So that's like <laughs> one of my side goals. And well, actually, at this point, it's become my main goal in esports and in this industry because I'm invested in this is like where I learned everything. This is kind of where I grew up was where I'm working currently. Right. And I really want to build up specifically that creative scene that I think is being undervalued and underappreciated when we're talking about long term goals. So maybe not even by next year, but something that I, I just thought of this yesterday to put it into words. But like in general, I've just wanted to build a creative scene. And I think that more specifically, I want to see a creative, whether it's designer, illustrator in any sense, I want to see a creative on the front face of a major esports organization. So love it. there's content creators, there's streamers, everything. My goal is, and I don't really care who it is. I just want to see it happen and I will support them when it does happen. Same with the organization that decides to make that step. I would love to see one of those creatives on the same level, being valued the same as those major content creators and streamers that always get represented by those organizations, right? That's a beautiful thing. Like that. that's actually, you know, I don't know how many people have even thought that deep into it, right? And mm -hmm. that, I think that's also showcasing the talent that, that you see as well as what you want to showcase. Mm -hmm. um, how would you feel if it was someone from outside of the space? It's like, for example, Farfetch isn't going to happen, but Virgil comes over and Virgil mm -hmm. is helping you at 100C, right? And he's that front forward face. I think that is where I would kind of be like, eh, right? Because that's like Louis D getting Virgil and be like, hey, you know what I mean? Like you're already taking something that's popping, someone that's there. Yeah. I think it'd be cool to see someone that has the roots in esports. Um, personal opinion. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I would love for it to be someone who is already well respected in the community. I think right. either way, in order, if that's what it took in order for things to grow, I would love for that to be a starting point. So just even recognizing the influence that creatives have, whether or not they're inside or outside the industry, I think will spark some sort of conversation that can lead into, you know, well, if it's working with this guy, Maybe we inspire some creatives along the way who are already in the kind of gaming space and they work their way up and also make it to these big organizations. Like at this point, anything that happens, if it's progress, it's progress. Like we'll take it. If it could be a creative in the scene already, that would be awesome. But uh, these are these are all kind of steps for the bigger picture, right? I mean, I would love to speak more about this too um, as far as my plans and what I have in mind. But in all honesty, I don't even really know myself how it's going to be executed on. I'm just making those steps and seeing, you know, I think you know this about me too. I'm like experimenting on a lot of things, but we're just going to see how it, how it goes. Right. I feel maybe uh, just from hearing your passion on it, we, we just set you up with a business, right? Like what if you started the creative community awards, right. Yeah. Um, or something that that's an, a real deal award event, you know, like what we know that people are starting to address it because of the voices out there. But like, mm -hmm. what if what if that's an internal thing, you know, before you know it, you're going to have your own trophies given out. Right. And those yeah. are the things that need to be addressed. And it doesn't have to be esports either. Mm -hmm. I think that's another thing is like it, it's all, it's almost like some of these artists are doing things and they're not getting recognized or they are getting recognized, but not like what they would if the mass public could see it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think it'd be sick if there was a marketplace uh, where you could buy physical goods from these creatives that want to create. Like mm -hmm. I've been seeing some vinyl characters being created. I've been seeing even if it's stickers, bro, like I'll buy a sticker pack all day. Like I'll support yeah. people all day. You know, like even those things that where they're tangible goods, that's the one of the biggest things also is I want to see more tangible goods. And I, I know NFT is popping right now, so I don't want to go against the grain, but like I'll yeah. always be a, a physical fan of art, right? Like you've seen my some of the stuff in my house. Like oh, yeah. I take that pretty serious. Um, Because you find an artist you like in this space, it's different because I like all the artists because they're from our, our community. You know, there's not like one person that I have like hate for or whatever because they... They're all in this community mm -hmm. and that's what makes the thing so important. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. That's kind of one of my, I guess, pain points that I've been trying to address in the industry is we need just more, whether or not it's physical or whatever happens, like we need more content. So the creative scene, the only real content that happens is when there's a contest every once in a while by like some big prize by you know, whoever decides to host it. And that's the only thing we get excited for. So I would love to long term to have events going on that just a wide variety. I want to do game shows, awards, 
marketplace is an awesome idea you know just literally anything to diversify the amount of content so that we can get more excited about things in the community and help build each other off of that excitement right dude that would be sick i i have um an idea we should chat about maybe offline or someone else could take this but it Mm -hmm. What if we, we even built out like um, like building Oculus rooms is like definitely going to be the wave of the future, right? In some some regards, whether it's Oculus or any type of VR situation. Right. Um, and that tech is becoming more uh, like, I guess, user coder friendly to where mm-hmm. you don't have to be like a crazy, crazy tech head to, or d- developer to be able to do that. But that would be sick to host like galleries as well. Imagine if you took the the monthly gallery aspect in a, in a, in a virtual platform, whether it's in Oculus or not, even on your computer. And you CGI that thing to where it's literally your own museum and you could theme out that thing. You, you know, you you could host certain individuals on there. You could have like Easter eggs and, and clickable. They, we could go on this for days. Right. But I think that that would be a really cool thing to explore as well, just because it would allow everyone to be involved. You don't have to go to like a, a real gallery. Like, I don't know how many galleries you go to or whatever, but I was always trying to go to one in, in New York. And it was it was cool, but it was so crowded. You'd wait. Some of the pieces on there, you could tell they were biased towards, like they would put towards the front. Like I said, I got to quit rambling on it. No, I mean, that's good. That's kind of, that's why I wanted more people to to hear your voice, specifically in the creative scene, because this is something I always admire about you is the ideas you come up with is, I think, why you see the success that you do. Because you, you have a, a state of mind that is not very common and not a lot of people can um, say that they they have that type of thinking, you know? Um, and I kind of wanted to lead that into the next question. So way before esports, you said you did college football and you had an injury, which ultimately it led you to switching your career paths. So it seems like it's working out for you now. And I think that has to do with that mindset and the way that you think. So um, I wanted to ask how that injury has affected who you are today. And if you have any advice for people who have maybe been under similar circumstances where they've had to change their path that they thought they had in life into something else because of something they didn't expect. Yeah, it's going to be the scariest moment you've ever had. Like, I mean, for me, it was every time that moment has happened for me, like football is all I knew growing up. Like I tried to, you know, I was playing since young, man. And between that and like just trying to get decent enough grades in school, like you know, mm-hmm. I, I was getting like, um, if, if, I, if I would get like a B average, I'd be like, damn, you know, the, the likelihood of me getting an A was very slim. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I just don't think like that. You know, I'm not, I'm not the best. Uh, I, I just I didn't care as much as I should have, obviously, staying in school. <laughs> but what, I think uh, the football thing was just the competitive spirit and then the team camaraderie. And I think leadership, I think uh, there's a difference between leadership in terms of like running things and telling people what to do versus being a leader and like helping educate because not everyone's going to be with you your whole career. Not everyone. And they, they need to pick up more than just finances from you. Right. So I think like if you can help people set them up for business, you can help set them up to just do more. Right. Push out their own art. You hear me all the time in calls. Like I, it's always like do more than just what you're doing right now, because that. Yeah, that's cool. And it's getting you by, but it's getting by what you want to do. You know, are you going to be like 10 years fast forward still just getting by? I think that's just uh, I think it's kind of lame, to be honest. And mm-hmm. I try not to surround myself with those people. But if, if they are, I try to motivate them enough to say, hey, like there's so much more out there. And like no matter what your location is and then it then it kind of gets the, the blend of corny. Right. You got to make sure you're not corny coming off like some motivational <laughs> speaker mm-hmm. of just saying like, yo, you may not be there yet, but you can get there. I, I more so think like dude like you know we have the same background we talked about it like where'd you come from you know like what's your background like it's not it's not the easiest you know like Mm -hmm. i'm sure we all came from a struggle and to be able to to address that struggle um and push through it that is the most motivating thing so i think if you're in something or doing something right now and you know that it's just not right or even if it might be right but you just want to try something new just leave just do it right In in a respectful way you know like uh Numerous times, like uh, one of the biggest things for me was uh, leaving, you know, one of the last corporate jobs I had, not corporate, but one of the last jobs I had as their chief creative. I thought it was a cool thing. The pay wasn't, it was awful, um, but I wasn't doing it for the pay. I was surrounded by my my squad all the time. Mm -hmm. So instead, I just looked at everyone and I said, hey, who wants to go with me to this thing? And like most of them were like, I'm down. The other was like, bro, you're crazy. Um, But it it ended up just kind of leading this weird path of like, hey, let's stop creating businesses for other people. Let, let's put it under a housing unit, call that shit paper crowns, and let's put a meaning behind that, that it, that it means something and is authentic. And we're not doing it for cash. Let's be, you see, let's be super transparent about the money. Let's mm-hmm. be super transparent about the things that traditional people get bogged down on and then just go from there, right? I think that's the culture of the things that we need to try to fix. I, I would say just taking that leap of faith. Uh, I think football ultimately was the greatest thing for me to get hurt, uh, you know, because like even if let's say fairy tale dream and me making it to the NFL and that whole thing happens, then what? 
right? Like mm-hmm. you hear all these things that go a lot deeper in like terms of like, uh, what is it, CTE or, or, you know, for, for your brain, like yeah. uh, just constant yeah. hits or, you know, the average lifespan, lifespan, the average NFL career span <laughs> time that you'd play or compete would be, I think it was like four to five years. What's after that? Probably going to get into esports anyway. That's what it looks like people are doing. Yeah, <laughs> so that's like, true. Right. It's, it's one of those things. So I just feel like I kind of bypassed the nonsense. Maybe I don't have millions in the bank like you could have. But what's the likelihood that happens anyway? You know, it's I would say being able to say that I was forced out of football due to an injury and laziness um, led to the best life I could have currently, because now it's there's no rules. There's no ceilings. You know, you can literally create whatever business I want tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Surrounded by great people. I can help them create businesses. We do this. Like This is pretty dope. <laughs> like you know, life is good right now. So yeah, absolutely. And that seems like it's a result of pretty much always thinking two steps ahead, you know, always looking at the future. Speaking of which, and this is probably one of my most anticipated questions, because I'm really curious, is there anything out there in the world right now that's you think people should maybe be paying more attention to or keeping an eye out for just thinking that far ahead in the future, right? 100% lithium. That's one of them (laughs) in Mm -hmm. terms of stocks. If you're trying to trying to get into stocks, there's a lot of things. So I know you probably weren't expecting that answer, but I would. <laughs> how long do we have on this one? Is this one like you want me to wrap this quick? Take your time. No? Take your time. There's a lot. I'd start with the NFT craze, just because I know. Congrats, mm-hmm. big big applause selling that. <laughs> hey, thank uh, you. I, I was the guy in the corner that didn't understand it, so I hated it because I love physical art, right? Mm-hmm. So, but I could address that. I'm very aware of it. Uh, then I started seeing what it means, kind of for the future, and it's no. It's like leaders of the new school is what we are, right? Like it's it, it's it's. It, trading cards, right? You, you look Pokemon cards. It was yeah. only a matter of time, right? Like I think that wave kind of came back and woke people up to a digital version, but people have been doing this for a, a while from what I've been reading, right? Yeah. So it's not like this is like brand new. It's just brand new to us. You know, when you look at the people that have been doing it and putting in their time, they're selling pieces for crazy amounts of money. If I were to buy pieces right now, it would be just purely out of support of dope artwork, right? That friends do, community does. Um, in terms of putting it around my house, I think there's a, there's a business there, finding a way to do that energy efficient and really diving into, hey, how can I put my, my crypto art on something more than just like a TV on a wall, right? There could be, yeah, we'll shut up on that. Maybe there's something there, like a mm-hmm. flip book or something that we could, we could come up with some cool ideas, I think, like a harness unit. But it's, <laughs> so I'm just going to keep going. I think in terms of like if, if dabbling in stocks, I noticed over the past year and a half, myself included, everyone I know is getting into stocks, right? Like I knew nothing about stocks. You just, it's just learning, man. I think this is the key time to learn everything. Even if you don't think you'll ever use it, like just learn it, like just, just know it to where if there's a conversation being had about it, you're knowledgeable to where it could lead as a platform effect to something else. Um, I think that there's, there's things in, um, dude, how long ago, like if I would have told you 10 years ago that we were going to Mars, what mm-hmm. would you, would you look to me and been like, wait, what? <laughs> like, yeah. It sounds like a, like a fantasy, right? A fairy tale, bro. I was listening to a, a podcast, um, dude saying that we're going, oh, we're going to do um, tourism around the earth in a year or two. And mm-hmm. if I were to tell, you know, I tried to have this conversation with my mother just the other night and she was like, she's like, get out of here. You're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> she, she tried to understand enough to wasn't having it. And she tried, she, that mindset. And I think Our parents and people of that age, I think that they are jaded to think one way, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that it's not their fault. Um, There's a lot in that regard, right? Where like, you have to educate. I'm sure, did your parents truly know what you do or was there an education process behind that? Yeah, I mean, they're still learning. So it seems like I'm always kind of showing them something new that's going on. But yeah, that's kind of what it started out with when I first, I guess, began my career was my parents' full support from them, but they had no idea what the heck I was doing they're like oh yeah that sounds great you know that's awesome that's you know <laughs> yeah. They give you that, yeah keep killing it and they have yeah. no clue right exactly like, my mom still doesn't even know what envy is truthfully she yeah. always goes that's great that's great. i'm like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like you know you physically got to show them at some point um yeah i think a lot of people have that problem especially like the esports pros mm-hmm. you know there's so many addressed things that need to be addressed there too um i was actually gonna bring this up that's how like nobody's talking about like the long term ar- arthritic or arthritis effects that you're going to have. Yeah. Right. And like yeah. your hands and stuff. That's like a real thing, bro. When you're using your hands that much and you're playing, you know, th- that's not like the way you hold a controller or a keyboard. That's not frequent. I'm sure. How many times have you had design sessions where you just need to stop? Yeah. You just go, yo, I'm getting a cramp in my arm because of this or my, my hand or whatever it is. Right. I think that's something that people need to explore as well. Great business opportunities there as well. But that should be required by the leagues or the, the, yeah. 
we'll, we got a lot to cover. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's something that's been on my mind for a while, too, because I think that all the time, whenever my hand starts cramping up, I'm like, man, I need to address this now because it, it's going to get it's not going to get better. So, I mean, from what it sounds like, though, a lot of stuff going on in the world is still very new, you know, and there's a lot of uncertainty that comes with that. But I know you and I both from experience just in like the esports and gaming scene, the fact that we're able to say we were there since day one is pretty life changing for us. And those moments are happening right now where people yeah. are allowed to say, you know, 10 years from now, I was there since the very beginning and it's changed my whole life because of that. Right. Uh, one hot dude i can't it means everything uh except you got to be careful i don't know how you feel do you ever get like that gatekeeper syndrome like for me for example i see a lot of esports consultants um i see a lot of community consultants and they've been here like two years mm -hmm. and if for some reason like I, I need to work and i've chatted about this actually to the team is like you got to work on that too you know because you don't want to be the guy that's like sitting there gatekeeping mm -hmm. like yo you can't get in our community like that you know but like it, it's all for the better but th there are some pretenders i don't know how you feel about that mm -hmm. uh, there's some definite pretenders as far as the gatekeeping goes, like that's one of the things that I at least enjoy about the creative scene is, and I was kind of speaking on this earlier, like if it's progress, it's progress. So I'm just trying to get us out of the rut, right. whatever that takes. If it's someone who is new to the scene, but they're making it work, perfect. You know, like keep building the scene, keep building the community. If it's somebody who's, like you said, like kind of faking it and it starts to become obvious, usually in my eyes, the truth kind of eventually, it might not be today, tomorrow, but at some point, people will start to see them for who they really are and fate will kind of just do its thing at that point, you know? You're uh, you're a better person than I. I'm the guy that like, you've heard me. I'll be like, hey, that guy's, <laughs> that guy's not, like, what are you doing, bro? But at the same time, like, you're right. Um, it needs to be more of your mindset, right? And I think that's mm -hmm. where like maturity shows levels at different ages, right? So like for me, I, I have a lot of pride when it when it comes to this community or when it comes to like different things in this community. Mm -hmm. And I, I know the history, you know. It's so, like when I see people get things wrong, like some people think people have been around a lot longer than they have. And I think instead of me having the mindset, which is just something that I've thought about working on as well. So it's 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 all it's all for the betterment of the community anyway, right? So exactly, like we're all just here for. For the growth, however that ends up happening, as long as I can play some role in it, I'm chilling. You know, right. uh, this. Pretty big role. I think you're leading something that is gonna get to a point where, dude, you have endless possibilities for the creative voice, right? Like, I think that you should really own that which you are and lead that. You know, and it's 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 hard because you have the blend between how many jobs do you have. You give me all the praise, but you know. You got a lot going on too, right? You're working on a lot of things simultaneously. Yeah, I stopped counting. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, and, and that's, I don't know if your your stream knows or whatever, but you have a lot, you know, and, and things that you're very passionate about too. So it's it's going to be interesting. Um, I think the fact that you've managed to do, to keep your personal grant, brand gr like growing and like mm -hmm. a parent is, is super important, man. Like for me, I used to love like doing like edits or posting on Instagram and then showcasing certain things and like, I looked the other day, I was like, damn, I haven't posted since the esports awards. Mm -hmm. I haven't posted since whatever, you know, so. Yeah, crazy. I mean, I don't think I need to express, I appreciate that a lot coming from you. Moving into that, so this is, I guess, will be the last question on my end, and then if you have a couple more for me, and uh, we're also going to do a Q&A after we get through everything for you guys, if you have anything to ask Skylar, but I just wanted to ask, looking into the future, what are going to be your short-term and long-term goals? I think... At Everything kind of blends into long term for me. If it happens sooner than others, that's awesome. We'll call mm -hmm. it short term. For me, we have a huge announcement um, next week. For so I'll, I break it down by companies, right? So we'll actually, we'll, we'll go Crowns. Crowns is continuing to make people's lives better than it was. Building a business based on good principles, right? Like we, we have, we have, I think, really good principles. The fact that we're buying each other books, right? Like <laughs> if we yeah. told other people that, they'd be like, that, "That's what? Like why are you buying each other books? Mm -hmm. You know, or like we buy each other courses." I think those type of things to get each other better shows more than, hey, let's knock out a Twitch pack, make a margin on it and crush it. I think there needs to be more of that. So it's it's paying attention to the people around us while bringing on new talent that really want to grow, right? Mm -hmm. I think that, that are hungry, that really see more to it. Because the agency world, I think, is jaded from back in the day when people were on like gaming teams, right? Like I would hear so many people be on like, oh, it's on Dare Arts. Yeah. And that was cool, but this, or I was on Obey or whatever it was, you know, everyone started somewhere. And I think if you can separate the way that culture could have been because it was just, you know, it's old school mentality on how things are ran. Mm -hmm. I think that's number one is creating this culture inside crowns while 
kind of being, dude, I love putting on for our community. You know how powerful it is to go in these business meetings that we're in, some of us, and we're just like, yo, like we're from the gaming community trying to keep up with the, the likes of uh, Future Brand and these big, big agencies, right? We've seen the way that they work. We've seen the way that they, they don't, they don't do anything different. But I think that that also, you know, in, in a way, shape or form, do I think we're on that level. But I think growing and keep growing to get to some of those levels we are because we are on that level in our own right. You know, we have we have talent that we need to refine and, and keep focusing and pushing in different units, but or different directions. But I think um, control is grow that brand, like take over the meal replacement market. I think that's just untapped. Um, mm-hmm. I think I read it's supposed to be a twenty five billion dollar industry by twenty twenty five and doing it creative and unique. I love the collectible option. Oh, yeah. I love being able to give the community more than just like a meal replacement. Granted, I do think the product itself is going to keep booming and doing its thing. I, I think the goal is. I love being in the gaming community, but rep- or like going out, right? So like the, the whole concept of control from the keyboard, but stands for catered to real life. We can always pay homage to our community, whether people know it or not, right? It's so like when it's in Walmart, when it's in Target and these things that we do plan on doing over the course of the next year, then like, that's a big deal for me. I think spend more time with my dogs, another one, <laughs> do some of that more, bro. Like, uh, and then travel, see people when the world comes back up, but find ways to get back. There's a lot. I just want to, I want to build there's two more businesses we haven't announced yet. Those mm-hmm. are going to drop in the next three months. One of them I'm dropping with a dude that deserves so much and he hasn't got that break yet. This is his first business. So I kind of hopped on to really just help him sell that thing home. Dude, help help you build out this creative community awards. What, what, whatever the, the, yeah. the CCA is 2021. Bro. Absolutely. That's, maybe that's, that's in the books now. Just anything. I, I think those opportunities just capitalize. Uh, I want us to, from a Crown's perspective, I want us to collab with other artists in the space, right? That we can get to not view us as competition and drop dope pieces, merch, tangible items. Like, you know, we think of some pretty cool stuff and I'm sure they do as well. And I think mm-hmm. if we can break the barrier down of like the nonsense of, yeah, we're competition. Like, nah, dude, you're creating some fucking awesome things while we're doing the same thing. It, it, it's one of those things, you're just trend spotting. That is something your stream should always know. Anyone that watches this is trend spotting. Uh, I think if you can catch a trend early and you can capitalize on it, y- your success is imminent. There, there's no way around it, so. That's perfect. I mean, that last line, that's like a closing line. So I know you said you have questions for me, but that's everything I have for you. I'll go ahead and answer them. And if you guys have any questions, start thinking about them now, because we'll do a QA and a briefly after this. So, yeah, um, one of the ones like one of the bigger ones I had for you was um, how does your family feel about what you're doing? Has any of this led you to be able to give back to them in any way, whether it's family, girlfriend, people close to you, whatever? I'm super, super fortunate because like I was saying, my family has supported me since day one. They were always on board with what I was doing. Coming from an Asian household, that's pretty big, you know, uh, because my mother's Japanese. Normally, it doesn't go that way. So I think that the way she kind of raised me was to support me and be independent and just do whatever makes me happy, right? So that's ended up working out and it's helped me just kind of explore different things. Like I've gone through a lot of different paths in life and I feel like I'm trying, like I'm starting to find the right one. And that mostly has to do with my family saying like, yeah, it's cool. Do whatever you want, right? As far as giving back to them, my mom just wants a shout out when I make it on the big screens on TV. So she always says when I accept a big award, she just wants me to say, this is all because of my my mom. So shout out to her. Um, shout out your mom, bro. <laughs> yeah, so I'll shout her out now. But um, right now, I I feel like I'm still so new. I'm still kind of growing. I would love to keep giving back to them because they've you know, given to me so much. And I'm going to make sure that that happens whenever I get the opportunity to, right? But yeah, Damn, I like that. Yeah, thank um, you for asking that. Oh, of course, dude. I, I had a couple for you. Um, <laughs> so I, I think that the position that you're in right now, being kind of this, um, the voice of the community, what's something that you think that others should hear? Like, I, I know you, you look at people's portfolios, you kind of, you know, your whole whole message is about, hey, like, let's let's kind of grow together. Let, let's get this going. You know, what is something that you could tell someone to take away? Let's say tomorrow that they're just grinding the same graphics, the same designs, the same whatever they're doing, right? Like, h- how can they break that norm? H- how can they stop doing what they're doing now to get noticed by more? Do you think that's literally just switching your style up, going more unconventional from what they're used to? I'm sure you've answered this before, but I just personally want to know because I never asked. Yeah, I think I the most common answer that I give people, um, I guess in that regard is to just be as intentional as possible and being self-aware. And when you're creating work, don't just blindly go into it because it will kind of all just turn into this, I guess, noise 
you know, if you're not conscious of all the decisions you're making. So the more aware you are, the more aware you are of things like trends going on, you know, things that are happening, you're more aware of what inspires you. So being as intentional as possible when you create and just anything you put into life or anything you design or really not just for designers, but for anyone, just if you put reasoning and thought into it, it'll become really meaningful for you and it'll help you kind of push yourself by having that awareness. You had to know that question. You've been asked that a lot, huh? In that was like different, a moment. That's me going, okay, <laughs> all right. <laughs> I've been asked that question kind of worded differently. Um, right. But that's kind of a motto that I just live by. And it's such a broad response like to... That's just kind of how I live my life. You know, it, it ends up working out as an answer for a lot of questions that I get asked. But yeah. I got more. Oh, I got more for you. Come on, let's go. Next right. one. Top five favorite artists in the community right now. Oh, you have to. Okay. I know it's hard. Uh, and and what, what you could do, though, just because it is like one of those, you know, you got a lot of friends and no one's trying to feel any type of way right now. So mm -hmm. just so this question is known, five through whatever are yeah. all the same scale, right? Like, it's, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> There's no way I could list like number one, two, three, four, five. So there, when I think of questions like this, like this is how I see top fives. Like whenever someone asks me, what's your top three, top five of anything? For me, it's just right. whoever's the first person that pops into your mind is like just instinctually, that's probably who you think it is, right? Love that. So Love when that. I think of top five people in the esports industry that just instantly pop into my head, Jesper, immediately impact podgy amazing illustrator he needs more absolutely needs more credit abel is oh my goodness abel from crowns the rate that he's improving is honestly scaring me it is like <laughs> it is terrifying for me so abel is doing amazing he he has such a bright future ahead of him it's awesome to see and a fifth one i mean if i'm allowed to say skylar johnson for it, creatives man. I mean, yeah. realistically, creative mind. We got to keep that behind closed doors. We gotta go <laughs> okay. We gotta go okay. Stuff. If I if I wasn't allowed to pick Skyler now in this point, like there's like a million names in my head, so it's like we'll go easier for you just because of categories. I don't know if you did anyone in video yet. What about video? In video, ooh, that's a good question. I actually don't know a lot of people in the video space. Kevin is amazing. I think Kevin is. I mean, you and I were talking about it. He's he is uh, going places, right? That, I think that's what's dope about. It. I don't want to interrupt, but like building out that section of the company as well. That's mm -hmm. it's going to be crazy, man. It's going to be nuts. Yeah. Absolutely. Kevin for video is kind of the first person that pops up into my head. Someone in the chat said Sesso. And I, I can't believe I didn't think of Sesso. So <laughs> he's he's also going to be on my list because that guy, uh, I have way too much praise to put into one stream for, for him. So cool. Um, Man, that was a scary question. Nah, dude. I feel like no. I'm going to get DMs right after this from a bunch of yeah, an angry mob much. last one is just kind of more personal um what, what what's something that you want to see improved inside the businesses that we're in together oh okay. let's not talk about the goods let's talk about the bad right or not even the bad the, the things that you think needs to change inside crowns right well that's okay crown specifically is tough because in my eyes it is like the perfect model of how things should be run so now hold on <laughs> people are gonna think i gave you money before this. <laughs> okay that. well this is so let me kind of explain what i mean by that but the reason why i like crowns and why i have so much respect for skyler is because as an agency and not even just as like a design agency but just how the business is run is it's super independent so there's no chains on really anything right so I think most businesses you work for, there's always like some, you can't do this, you can't do that. But in our case, like if it's for the benefit of the business or the brand or whatever, like we'll at least talk it through, you know? So that's kind of what I really appreciate about Paper Crown. So, uh, you know, if you're- Do we have a negative though? Get us a negative. Yeah. Like get... Well, okay. So let me ask, let me flip it to you then. What, do you see any negatives for Paper Crowns? Yeah. The, the ability for me to remember that we're human, right? Mm. And that's a hundred percent. I always try to make, I always try to set these deadlines that are sometimes unrealistic because where mm. are we going? It's just getting us on the next project, right? Yeah. It's a never ending loop. So I think me being more aware, as I told you earlier, mm -hmm. that's probably my biggest. It's good to not have a, a huge list of negatives, but I would say slow it down sometimes and say like, damn, we're doing a good job. Mm. That's, that's a negative. You know, you yeah. know how it is. Like it, it's like, yo, is that close? All right. It's close. Cool. We're in a good spot. All right. By the way, we have this starting next week. Okay, cool. 
Yeah. You know what I mean? So like we don't really stop. And I think that that's that's something that I'd like to do a better job. But I think even the culture we're building in terms of like the watching live and the things internally or and inside, I think those are the things that need to happen more of. Right. Yeah. Is like more of those less talking about just clients and work only. And, you know, it's, it's that family culture we talk about all the time. I think that's mm-hmm. important. There's so many clicks inside this this community that are, that are massive. Right. So like we need to make sure that, that we do a better job or I need to make sure we do a better job of not isolating those. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like sometimes I am very crowns protective. So all those, I would say those are big ones. But don't start asking me questions. Mine would be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I'm hoping that it, it would spark some inspiration for me. And it, so I am think I came up with something myself and I'm thinking like, obviously we know we're a family and how we run things as a team. And I wish that more people outside of the team knew how we ran things, you know? Right. So right. I know that Paper Crowns is very internal at least right. as of right now, it's very internal. And we just recently started sharing just kind of like what goes on in our personal lives as a team. So I remember back uh, way back when we had like a collage of all of our setups with the uh, crowns neon sign that I have to my right, you know, right here. That to me is big because it's it's taking a step back from the work and just being like, hey, we are human. Like we're, we're people in a team, in a family working on this. Right. So I'm always an advocate for like showcasing stuff like that, you know? Um, yeah. You're always, and you, you and I go back and forth sometimes like, yeah, but yeah, yeah you know, <laughs> that's what I love because everyone has their own like opinion on it. And I, I hope that you, you, you feel the same. Like there's never a right or a wrong. It's always like a group consensus. I think that's a big deal. Yeah. Um, last question for you though. All right, let's go. One thing that people would not know about you hundred percent right now could be embarrassing, weird, could be straight, like normal, could be whatever. Well, what's what's one thing that someone doesn't know from this point that you've never mentioned on the internet? Oh, that I've never mentioned on the internet? Yeah, some people just don't know. Like no one in the stream is going to know. I probably won't know. Yeah. Right? Like you got one thing that you've never said. Ah, oh, man, that's so tough because I feel like I, I've shared my whole life story at this point. I think most people don't know that I love pigeons, but I know <laughs> that you know that. Okay, so I, I'll say this then. People know at this point that pigeons are my favorite animal you know they have been since i was in high school i've always loved pigeons i don't think people know why so maybe i can share that now but the reason why i like pigeons is one because i'm super invested into street culture and in my eyes a pigeon is like a really big icon for street culture like always being on the streets right um i think pigeons are underrated so if you don't know this, pigeons and doves are in the same kind of breed, right? Uh, they, they're right. in the same class and doves get all of this high praise, but pigeons are like, you know, they're kind of like, they're like rats, you know, people like refer to them as rats of the skies. Right. This is such a subjective thing because I still think pigeons are whack, bro. Just, I mean, am I allowed to say that to you? It's fine. It, I mean, it's, like, it's all I'm subjective. Just, Pigeons aren't whack. I, I just I never thought about pigeons like that. Pigeons. So you, you like pigeons because like they're 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 in the street. Right? Yeah. Like pigeons are the streets. In in my eyes, and this is gonna be this is why I don't explain this to people. But in my eyes, this is a super abstract idea. Pigeons to me are a really great example of how I think creatives are seen by a lot of people. Damn. Right? Is that a diss or is that a compliment? It's because in my eyes, pigeons are awesome. You know, like they're. Nice. They're they're like in the same kind of classes like doves who are like, you know, super praised as birds, right? You use them for like weddings and whatnot. And pigeons are the same thing, but people don't appreciate them as much as they should. So I, that's kind of how I relate the two together. Bro, I am beyond thankful that that was the question that I asked. Because hey. that, that just opens up a whole, whole a, a bunch of pigeons <laughs> that you at you one day, bro. And you're just going to be. Hey. I, I respect it, man. All right. Yeah. I just think they're underappreciated and they'll get the respect they deserve. All right. Damn, just just all right. letting it be known. Pigeons are going to mm-hmm. run the streets. All right. You got to do something with that. Right. Because I don't think people know that at all. And you have to do something with that. Please. Yeah. All right. I'll, I'll uh, take note of it and figure something out. <laughs> so if you have Skylar, any last minute things you want to say or anything you want to let us know, let us know now. No, dude. I, I mean, I'm, I'm always around. I feel most of the people in, in the chat, I just I chat with frequently or, or they're messaging me or like mm-hmm. uh, tweeting at me or whatever, you know, like it's just dope to see all the people that you get in here. It's almost like just just a meeting hub for all the creatives that we see around the community. Mm-hmm. So I, I, don't, I don't have anything, man. I've said my piece. People know how I feel on things. Anyone you want to shout out? Any names? Uh, you, 
you actually you and <laughs> i mean that from uh I, I just think what you're doing is great i think people can can really attach themselves to you um and then obviously everyone i work with i think and the people i used to work with uh I just see so many people doing great things. It's, it's so dope, man. Like we are in such a cool spot for our community, you know, and, and I, I, there, there's no individual that I really want to shout out because people all know how I feel about them. Mm -hmm. If they don't, that means I'm not doing a good job, right? Like I, I say it pretty frequently to the people around me, like good shit, like that. this is just the beginning. I will, that's the one thing, right? This is the beginning of, of we've been here so long. It feels like finally, like we're getting some recognition for things and all that, but this is literally nothing yet. You know, I told you like the likes of what's going to happen over the course of the next three to five years. And I think that's when things are going to get crazy. And some of these these uh, some of these artists, man, are about to blow up in their own way and they don't even know yet. Mm -hmm. I'm, uh, I promise that there, this there's going to be a, a gate that opens and the opportunities are going to flow. And I, I don't think it's going to be from the traditional norms that are in the space right now, like these gaming teams. Yeah, they're going to start doing some things. There's going to be some money invested in terms of internals. But there's going to be some some things that happen in the space that I think really change the game for a lot of people and change the life and the culture. Right. Mm -hmm. And if you're at the forefront kind of man in that, you know, I'm too busy, but hopefully I can help and put in my work. <laughs> but I think you do a better job than me and you're, you're the perfect person for that. So shout out to you. Hey, I appreciate that. I'll PayPal you later. So just let me know your details. Yeah, I, I actually, that's why I said it. <laughs> But hey, thank you so much for being on here. I know that everyone who's watching now appreciates it as well. Thank you guys for uh, being here for the stream. And uh, I will see you guys next week.